Hello Booktube, this is Leo from A Little Book Life and I am really excited to join in the Deep Conversation series introduced by Sarah from Hardcover Hearts of which many of you will have watched the previous ones about Ben Lerner's The Topeka School and The Years by Annie Ernaud which you both did in collaboration with Juan from Bookish Islander. This is a format that offers an opportunity for in-depth discussions of books that require a more thoughtful approach. And Cleanless by Garth Greenwell certainly is such a book. Also, in the Deep Conversation series, there is offered a nice opportunity for viewers to be introduced to and engage with each other's channels in a meaningful way. This is the third video in this series for Garth Greenwell's Cleanness. To get the fullest experience with this topic and our conversation, please watch the previous two videos before starting on this one. Sarah's introduction, which kicks off the thoughts on the book, its style, structure, plot and characters, as well as asking Dan from Weird Book Book Club some specific questions to answer in his video and Dan's response video and point of view on the book with his questions for me. Both videos will of course be linked below. Dan from Weird Book Book Club answered questions that Sarah asked him and he in his turn has asked some questions to me in his video. And the first question of Dan was, the final third of the book finds the narrator returning to many of his old sexual practices, riskier stuff, that leaves him feeling conflicted about why he wants the things he wants. It seems pretty obvious we are supposed to be viewing this through the lens of his relationship with R, comparing and contrasting, looking for signs of growth. Did you feel like this central, monogamous, clean romance at the core of the book complicated and enriched the explorations of sex at the end of the book? Well, <clears throat> as for my answer, that's a very interesting, interesting question then. There is a stark contrast between the sex scenes in the central part and those in the first and final part. It seems to me the narrator is only at rest in his mind when he is in a loving relationship and only then can he be free of shame, guilt and anger and therefore being able to let tenderness enter his sex life. It sheds a light on his sexual encounters in the rest of the book that would not otherwise be there and would have resulted in a pointless plot. So yes, the middle part of the book enriched the story in a fundamental way, I think. Then Dan's next question is, it seems worth taking a closer look at the narrator's concept of cleanness, since, after all, it is the title of the book. It is a fairly abstract concept the narrator uses to sum up the unique sexual dynamic he feels with R, but it's never explained or explored in much detail unless I missed something. Beyond the sense of shame the narrator associates with all the other sex he's ever had, cleanness shares some connotations with other problematic facets of the gay community today prejudice against men who are HIV positive, Crystal Matthews immediately jumped to mind. What did you make of the cleanness in this book? Was it a meaningful or useful concept for exploring gay sexual identity? Well, I think the cleanness does not refer to the sexual relationship he has with R. It refers to the need to feel cleansed of his shame and guilt 
and he can only reach that state of feeling clean after having violent sex. In the part called cleanness, it says, sex had never been joyful to me. It put a kind of cleanness over everything we did. Normally, he wants to be alone after having sex and not spoil the cleansing he has gone through. But with R he does not. He did not feel cleansed because he was not stained in the first place. Being with R is the only time when he feels that he does not need to be cleansed. And it is the only time when he feels he is being himself. In the part The Frog King, he says when he sees his Christmas gifts, I was grateful for the commonness of my feelings. I felt like part of the human race. The sad thing is that at the time he cannot fully enjoy this new relationship because he already dreads the outcome, losing R. He desperately asks himself, how had I let myself feel so much? And in the part Valediction, it was a habit of mine to rush towards an ending once I thought I could see it, as if the fact of loss were easier to bear than the chance of it. And when it becomes true and they separate, he says, when thinking of sex with another man, I wanted something brutal, which was what frightened me. I wanted to go back to what R had lifted me out of. R had lifted him out of his shame and guilt. Then the last question of Dan is the last section of the book leaves our narrator in a moment of extreme vulnerability. Without many specific plans for the future and also cuddling a puppy, given the open-endlessness of that conclusion, what do you think is going to stick with you most about this novel? Any, any takeaways, themes, scenes, stylistic choices? Also, how would you rate our narrator's puppy cuddling technique? Well, as for my answer, unlike you, then for me, it was the middle part where there is one of the most beautiful depictions of being in love that I have ever read. Like with the sex scenes, it is so much intensified by being in this main character's mind. I loved the last sentence, which says everything about how the narrator will move forward from now on. And as for the dog scene at the end, for me, dogs are everything. I have had them throughout my life, both very large ones and small ones like I have now. But I never forget to put down a, a bowl of water for them. And that's what the narrator of cleanness forgets to do when he takes the stray dog in. That's her stay the night in his apartment and then goes to sleep. I was water, please. So, and finally, what is my overall verdict? To me, this is a narrative about coming to terms with shame and hurt and how sexuality can play a central part in that. This is done in a way that is, as far as I know, unusual in literature. By this I mean the experience of thoughts and inner feelings of the main character while he acts out on his sexual desires. Being able to relate to these kinds of sexual acts is not needed to be carried away by it as a reader. The inner workings of the narrator's mind make it fascinating. The way in which this is done is superb and is deeply human and makes it universal for both gay and straight readers. In the second part, it is also about the fulfillment of experiencing real mutual love, in which scenes it is the counterpart of the earlier story. Sexuality is a central part of human life, 
and so it is in this book. Greenwell said in an interview, eroticism is at the heart of sociality. All this is written in the most beautiful, fluid prose and set in an environment which feels very fitting. The raw parts against the bleak architecture of post-communist Eastern Europe versus the tender parts which are largely set in a lush southern European environment. I really loved reading this book, even though it was at times quite brutal. But it deserves perseverance in reading, and then you will be rewarded by a beautiful story. So, now it's time to go back once more to Sarah, and these are my questions for her. Do you feel that there is a kind of redemption for the main character? Does he get to a point where he can let go of things that haunted, troubled him? And why is it, you think, that sexuality is so different for, for this main character in a love relationship from when he is single? And what do you think of the cleanness of the title? What does it refer to? And since you have already read what belongs to you, his earlier novel, how do you feel this book compares or relates to that one? And finally, what is your overall verdict? Please go to Sarah's channel, Hardcover Hearts, to hear her responses and to listen to her wrap-up. Thank you for watching and bye-bye.